Hi, uh, Pickles Gaijin here, Jamaican content creator, YouTuber, Instagrammer. I tried this TikTok thing, but not, not really happening on TikTok for me. All right, guys. So, just another update. I haven't been myself for the last couple of weeks. I've been actually ill. I had some issues with my sinus and the heat and resulting in nosebleeds, nosebleeds as well as some blood being in my sputum or my phlegm. Um, that was sorted out then during that process a little ear infection thing going i think as well as my voice just totally left me for the first time in a very long time i lost my entire voice um if you've been on my instagram you've seen that i did a little um comedy night thing a stand-up comedy um in tokyo which went really well even though my voice was absolutely garbage i'll probably put in a clip here for you to hear how my voice sounded i'm like don't you stream that shit bro First of all, I'm 37 years old. We didn't have streaming. Uh, we had something called LimeWire. Subsequent to that, um, I wasn't able to do an event the Saturday. The Sunday I had this comic thing, uh, stand up thing by Renaco, who's a dope comedian, dope stand up. Um, first time doing something like this, I don't know if I'm going to ever get a chance to do it again, but I'd love to, especially with a full voice, so you guys can get the full nuance things in my stories. I have stories for days. One, two. After that, I had to take leave from work for three days because I could not speak. I was a no speaking nurse and I had to rest. And this Chinese medicine called Kampo 109. What's very interesting about Japan, I find, um, and I'll get to the medical stuff a little later, is that Japanese um, in general don't really get along well with Chinese or Koreans, right? But a lot of the things of those cultures they do like a lot of japanese people like k-pop a lot of japanese people like korean food a lot of japanese people like chinese food and chinese medicine is probably top tier it's known herbal medicine and stuff is really you is, is, is used by a lot of doctors here in japan actually the whole thing called kampo has different numbers on the front and it does different things for whatever um, illnesses or ailments or symptoms you may have which is really interesting so it's like a granular powder that you you orally ingest it doesn't mix with the water whatever it's like a powder some granules i have to swallow it and whatever but it really helped my voice and stuff and it's just interesting that you know japanese people really love to use things from other cultures but might not like the people or the the, the actual people of the culture which is not something that's unique to Japan per se, but it's I, I think it's something that is that happens in a lot in society in today's society as well. Because you know, as I said before, and I'll say it again without apology, I feel that like Japan are are the colonizers of Asia, the white people of Asia. Um, they do a lot of things and then play turn around and play the victim for some things. Um, it is what it is at the end of the day. I don't really care. I'm just I'm just telling you how I feel about it, you know, and based on my experience living here for almost 10 years. Jesus, I've been here a long time. Now, what is also even more invariably, what's even more interesting is that um I haven't been able to put out content at all because I was sick. Um I lost like five kilos and then I had to do a medical. So something called a Ningen Doku, which is Ningen for human and doku is basically you know like a dockyard a ship where you have to check the hull blah, 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 blah. and basically it's a full medical all right the first thing that got to me was that i had to collect my own shit i had to collect my own stool sample now i've never done a medical like this in my life and so i had to two days before you're required to take two different stool samples so you either can set a container in the toilet you or you can put line some paper on the front of the toilet or whatever and you take a dump there. Now, me being the hands-on guy that I am, and the fact that I used to play cricket, I have really good hands, I catch a lot. I made a bed of, of tissue, like a really thick amount of tissue on my hand. And I did the do and caught my stuff. Now, you really never know how full of crap you are until you actually have to catch your own crap. It was hot, one. TMI, I don't care. And two, it was heavy. I'm a frequent goer, right? So, whatever. Anyway, so I had to dip it the thing and do the sample, run it to the top, I don't make sure I get enough, and stick it in a tube and put it away. And, they, and I have to hold the tube for two days. Um, also, I went to a sleep clinic. 
uh, to deal with my sleep apnea, my snoring. I, I really snore really badly. And I've been having issues like dropping asleep in random places. I've been talking to somebody like, all right, so sort that out. So I'm supposed to get a machine this week to do the test at home. Um, so I'm trying to take care of my health. Health is really important. I'm 37 years old and there's no way I should weigh what I weigh one. And two, there's no way I should look like a pregnant woman at any point in my life. And I've walked past persons in Japan that are bigger than me and that has woke me up. And also, um, one of my friends did that did a thing to me at an event that we were having together with some people that we we're familiar with and I haven't even spoken to her about that thing and she said she didn't care or felt but she had to say what she had to say and she said what she said but that wasn't really what it was anyway, I have a wedding this year anyway, so I was on my way to sort of lose weight the thing about losing weight in Japan especially you lose it so quickly it takes so long to lose and you gain it within an instant so Funny enough, I'm going to tell you the whole story. It's going to be a bit, bit of a long ranking, ranking podcast type vibe. All right? Of course, Patreon, my, my loyal patrons will get this first and then you guys will get it uh, probably a day later. Love you, patrons. They have been really a rock. They've been supporting me throughout everything. Um, I've been posting a lot there, but when I post, I get stuff that you guys haven't seen, you know. You can join it, you know, for as low as $3 and you get exclusive behind the scenes stuff that I don't post on, on my YouTube channel anymore and stuff, you know, just updates and stuff better than what you're getting now. All right, I'm trying to be more consistent going forward, maybe more like a podcast vibe and a couple of street interviews, going, you know, when I get better. Cool. So this whole Ningen doc thing was really interesting. I did the research. I saw prostate exam and my eyes opened wide because... I know that at some point a doctor has to stick the finger up your booty to squeeze your prostate to check for swelling or whatever. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I can't do this because my booty is not meant for that sort of thing. I was like fully scared. Um, then also they want, they have to look at your stomach. Okay. So and take pictures of your stomach and whatever and your esophagus and the, 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 there's a tract from here that goes down to your stomach and stuff. So, either can drink a barium solution, a barium, barium, barium solution, or you get the camera stuck down your throat through your nose. I was the boy that life. And it's a funny story about that. So, I was, I selected the barium, the barium, or whatever the thing is. Cool. No. For the sleep test, they told me I didn't know that they had to stick a camera up my nose to go down much I can see what's happening with my breathing and my, and my airway. I was like, oh, hell no. You're not doing that. I was nervous. I, was, I, I felt like I was going to cry. And guys, believe it or not, it wasn't that bad. He put a little, put a little anesthetic here. Did that, did that. Then he just did this. I went through this, this black long, oh, pause. This black cylindrical thing going up my nose. I went down. I was like... Mm. I, had to sw I had to swallow and make sure I breathe through my and he was like Josu Josu I felt like a Japanese kid they were telling me Josu Josu oh, nice 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 good job good job you did well doing well and then I thought I was done this home he said no let me go in the right nose <laughs> nasal passage and check too and he did that and came out and it was great he spoke more good English and so when I was really confused about what he's saying with medical terms, hey, can you can you repeat that for me in English? And he did. I was really dope. Um, Dr. Chiba. Yeah, so sleep clinic is in Makahari, um, in Chiba, which is uh, at the what station is it? Something Kahim Makahari or something. Some that's the name of the niche. That's the name of the station. Actually, it's a pretty dope station. It has an outlet mall, um, the Mitsui outlet mall there with all the brands, the big brands and whatever. And then it has another strip type mall there, Eon type mall. Uh, no, a plenum. It's called plenum with food and where you're sleeping in the case. So cool. I did that. So Saturday, um, I had to go to this, this medical now. So people, I have this shit in my bag, literally in my bag with all the forms and whatever, sun up outside, get there super early because I don't want to be late. All right. I get there like at 7.45 for 8.15. Um, go in, get your numbers, you walk up. Like one thing about Japan's medical stuff, I must say, I am impressed with how they do the tests generally. But I was sorry about totally else. Right, cool. So, we do the test, going through, boom, get entrance, and they say, okay, it's 5,500 for this test. It's from 8.15 to about 12.30, well, four hours span. 
So we're going through, they give you a clothes to change into, and you're just basically going through like this bam bam. First one was measuring my waist, my belly is big as hell. Yeah, whatever, well, cool. First of all, I was wearing 4XL clothing because they want to make sure it was big enough and comfortable for me. 4XL is like maybe 2XL in regular countries or, or maybe two and a half. Yeah, cool. Cool. Boom. Do that now. I'm swimming my clothes, walking with my gold chain, looking like Pablo Escobar on a retreat on a Sunday, chilling like a villain. You know what I mean? Going through. Boom. They go in, they take my blood pressure. No, they take my blood pressure. They, um, what is it? Oh, they measure my height. I came back first time. It's like 183 centimeters. I'm like, no, I'm no, I'm I'm not that sure. I'm at least 186 with shoes on. So went again, did it and made sure I was aligned and whatever my heel was against the wall. 185.1 without shoes. So roughly 186, six foot one and a half in height. Cool, that's not bad. Um, went to get my blood, people. I have deep line veins, all right? I have deep line veins. Even when I was at my smallest, I, it was difficult to get my veins. veins are really deep line. It's a family thing. It's hereditary. The dick went in here. The woman tied me up like a drug addict going to get that heroin. And she tied me up. Bam, bam, boom, boom, boom. Oh, can I saw this. Mmm. Now you come on in. And then she, I said, usually they take it from here if they can't find any. And she this couldn't find any veins here. Went into this arm. Stuck it. Nothing. Nothing. So it's, ah, yeah, buddy, the and this was, a, I think, an experienced nurse. But in Jamaica, even before I came to Japan, nurses had difficulties finding my veins. But only the senior top top of dog nurses, the nurse, experienced ones could find it. Cool. They said, okay, come back later after you do your barium or whatever. Go in. Did a eye did a um, breathing test. <sighs> That was crazy. Did the breathing. That came back okay. Um, meanwhile, they took the stool sample earlier and they were they were like taking care of that. Um, doing the running the test in the meantime, when I'm doing other tests. Um, did x-rays of my chest, uh, went in, did a ultrasound of my stomach, which was really cool. I felt like a pregnant woman, put the jelly on the belly and do anything on the rub, and I'm like, oh, this is great. And they said, okay, that's what I said. So then, so that means take the take in a breath. Tomate, stop taking a the breath. They say the image, and then what's let out? I can't remember. Whatever they said, let out. That had let out so much, and that was cool. Um, did that. What does it do to me? Um, they did the electrode thing to take my heartbeat and stuff, and to see my heart and my breathing. Did that. Um, then um, people, the barium. No, let me tell you something. It was absolutely not cute at all. My blood pressure 119 over like 70 something. My blood pressure is impeccable always. And so I'm always happy. Basically, my blood pressure represents how I am in real life. All right, cool. Now, people, let me tell you something about life. Life is a hell of a thing. So, this barium thing, the test is they want to the, the bear my saline in your stomach to take the pictures for, the, the, get the imaging for your stomach, the full image of your stomach, right? And the barium, the barium has to, what, I can't, what is the barium has to coat the entire stomach lining so they can take a picture. Now, they give you an effervescent popping medicine, uh, a, a medicine that inflates, right? Inflates your stomach to the max. And so it will cause you to burp. So, if you feel like you're burping, you have to keep swallowing and not burp. Then you drink this barium, little by little first, and it tastes not good or not bad. It's just a whatever in between taste. You take a little first and it wait and it goes in and starts to coat your stomach. And you have to drink maybe 250 milliliters of that thing. It was awful. Lukewarm, nasty, white something. It's like chalk, drinking chalk. All right. Then they put on this machine. If you're over 130 kilograms, you can't go on it. I barely made the weight at 126.5 kilograms. Leave me alone. Leave me, I know. Boom. It's like a roller coaster. You have to hold on. They turn it at an angle to take a picture and it can't breathe. Meanwhile, I'm trying to make sure I don't burp because I usually build and go burp, whatever. So I'm holding this thing in and I go down, take a picture, turn to the right, turn to the left, roll over about three times. All right. And then, you know, to make sure you evenly coat it to take the picture. The last step, the guy presses my stomach and I go burp and I hope he didn't hear. And then he took a picture of the matter. You have to drink medicine one more time. I'm like, wah. So I thought I had to start over the whole process. This was like almost 10 minutes already enough taking pictures. 
Get the bubbly bubbly medicine again, drink it, drink it, and then just hold my mouth and gum bate and gum on through. Made it through that. Went to the doctor after to see me and he said, okay, everything is fine, everything is normal, heart rate normal, blood level normal, your stomach stuff is normal, everything came out cool, but you didn't do the blood work yet. So I go to the blood work now. Woman comes in now and says, let's try again. And she ties it even tighter. Different lady. Nothing here. Nothing here. She says, okay, let me try right here. And she goes in and says, ah, okay, I found it. And she goes, boom. And when she slips in nothing, I'm like, she says, it I said, no, that's what I'm not looking. And she couldn't get the veins. So she said, oh, so go in and go in and I'm like, woman. So they say, oh, they always say, um, goo pa, goo pa, eh, to get your, get your veins pumping and to show. All right. So I do this with and then she finds one here and says, ah, couldn't sit tighter. Yeah, yeah, buddy. And she goes in. I said, go in and say, I'm doing this. I'm, uh, and she pulls and gets the blood. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm ready to leave now. And I said, wait, you have to wait. Let's, if, you, if you have time, wait. Let's get the blood culture done. And then um, we can find out if everything's okay. Everything came back fine. No diabetes, no cancer. Thank you, Jesus, for another year on this earth. And I told him about my lymph node that was hurting me here and the imbalance in my ears. He said, it's fine. We don't know what it is, but the lymph node gets swollen or tender when it's fighting an infection. So we don't know what it is, but if anything continues, come back later. Here's the part about the barium node that you need to know. That stuff solidifies. So you need to pass it out of your system. So you have to drink a lot of water. I was instructed to drink a lot of water and give it a laxative. Took the laxative and I said, if you don't pass out anything by lunchtime tomorrow, lunchtime today or dinner time tonight, take one more laxative. If you don't pass out anything by tomorrow lunchtime, take one more laxative. And if it doesn't come out, call us on Sunday because that means you're in trouble. You're constipated, right? people so as i said it's back still nothing drink drink i'm nervous she said go eat lunch normally so i leave now pay my bill five thousand five hundred yen thank you japanese medical insurance because usually without it's about 40 to 50 grand which is translates about 300 400 us dollars for the test i only pay like 40 dollars us cool boom get my kfc eat it on the train get on the train head to Hachihoji to do my hair because my regular nail um, hairdresser, hair, hairdresser, loctician, sorry, the person that does my locks is, is on holiday, but she lived just as far as this one. Why does all, why do all the people that do here in Japan, the locks people them, live in West Tokyo, like Saitama side? Oh, they can't move to Central Tokyo. Or Chiba, anybody in Chiba do here? Let me know because I'm willing to not travel three hours to do my hair. Anyway. Three hours and almost 5,000 in transportation alone. Anyway, so we do that. Cool. Head over there. Meanwhile, I'm trying to pass out this thing. And they said your stool is going to be white and lighter until it becomes clear to make sure it finish passing it out. I'm Googling online to make sure I'm not dying. One to three days, but barium should be out of the system. Cool. So I'm drinking the water, drinking the water. Stop. Couple times I'd use the bathroom at different train stations. Jesus, God Almighty, yes, I had to. My stool was as white as the purest cocaine. I don't even know what cocaine looks like. I'm sorry. White as white line, lime, white as Colgate toothpaste. I've never seen that. And I was like, damn, this shit is crazy. White is actually crazy to me. Yeah, man, I know. First, it was very liquidy when they were cool, then it started getting solid. Now, here's the problem. So, I wasn't really past on anything after that. So, I took the train from that train station to Shinjuku, got on the bus from Shinjuku to Kisaraju. Had to make it back to Roppongi because I had an all white party. Got seen birthday to do. They said they need me by 10. I reached home at 7 25. Tried to take a dump. It got hard. I was almost constipated. I was like, ah, why do that drink so much? And boop, it plopped out. This big old tough thing. Praise God, hurry up, did my thing, bathe, shower, head on to the train, got to Roppongi in time. I'd take a taxi from Tokyo, so she got to Roppongi in time. Whole night, no alcohol. I was drinking water, drinking water. But then I passed out anything. What's going on? Cool. It normally, all this time now, I'm gaining back the weight that I had lost because, you know, it, it stuffs heavy. People, who told me, who told me that I was going to pass out anything? Still nothing, because I'm a regular guy. Usually I go like two, three times a day. All right? Nothing not happening. 
reach home, get home in time, miss sleep, miss my stop on my train station, wake up in time, get back up, get some sleep because I have work the next day. Now I'm feeling this tough pain in my stomach. I have work. I'm teaching the kids. I can't move too much. Very gassy. Burping, passing gas, whatever. But I felt a little pain here. Like, Jesus, am I dying? Am I constipated? I said, no. After lesson, I'm going to drink some more water, take a laxative. Took laxative. Started moving, trying to do some exercise to stimulate the thing to make sure I'm not constipated. Check it up online. Hey, am I dying? Is this very sudden fat in my intestines going on? After, ate some more food and it was still wasn't coming out. Anyway, eventually, passed my stool. No more pain in my stomach. I'm good to go. But I'm now heavy. And that's where we're coming to today. I am f easy, easy like Sunday morning. Oh, the aircon stopped while I was recording this video. That's crazy to me. Yeah, so I've been talking around for a long time. But this is what's been happening for the last couple of weeks. And now today, um, aug almost August 1st. Almost. All right. So that's what's been going on with my life. Um, I now kind of work at a club. In Rapungi called R3. If you have ever come in through on a Saturday, I, I'm there like maybe three Saturdays out of the month. I think maybe two and a half. All right. Um tr trying to get some money because I have a wedding to go back to in November in Jamaica. I haven't bought the ticket as yet. I'm also working on Soka in Japan, having their event first time back to full event um since the pandemic. All right. I'll be working on the Juve come through on saturday there's a special code hit me up for the code to get your tickets early for that so yeah i'm doing I'm big um some new music should be coming out please support i'm on spotify as dre amazing support my music uh, hopefully some new merch should be dropping this month as in august i ordered it from um, the sample from america it hasn't arrived yet it was just arrived two weeks uh, last week it's coming this week people i'm just uh, it's a whole mess but thank you so much for rocking with me all my day ones, day twos, day one thousands, new subscribers. I will be putting more content out. I look forward to hearing from you. Let me know what you want to see in the comments down below. Because the guy is content creator. Well, I know. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> oh my God,